Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to learn how to post a pay run in the Australian version of Zero's demo company. Now the process is pretty similar across all the countries. So you can go ahead and use this lesson no matter which version of Zero you're using. And also please keep in mind that this lesson is actually part of a full course. So if you'd like to learn more about Zero, then check out the description below. So if we go to payroll and pay employees, we get taken to the main pay run screen here in the demo company. So what we'll do is we'll just do a quick tour first and then we'll just have a look at a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll go ahead and post a pay run. So on this screen, you can see at the top we've got draft pay runs and then down here we've got a pay run history. And you can see we've got the weekly and fortnightly um, pay runs in the history there and the draft is a fortnightly one. Over on the side here, we've got the single touch payroll filing status. So obviously the demo company is not really hooked up to the ATO, so they're all saying overdue. But in your real um, zero account for your business, you will file them um, each time you do a pay run and they should come up green and they should say filed. So this is the main screen. From here, we can add pay runs or we can click on any of these and go in and look at the pay run history. So let's just have a quick look at this latest one. And in here, you can see that we can click through on each of the employees and have a look at their pay template. So I'll just show you that. Okay, so you can just have a look over the pay template and you can also print it out as you can see from the button down the bottom. So I'll just go back to the summary page here. So you can look at some reports for your pay runs, um, which we'll have a look in a bit more detail soon. There's also a few pay run options over here, um, such as downloading the ABA for the banking, um, if you haven't done that already, emailing pay slips to your employees and reverting it to a draft, which you can still do as long as you haven't reconciled it in your bank account. And then also you've got the file button. So this is what you press to file your pay run um, through single touch payroll to the ATO. So you'll click on that one every time you post a pay run. All right, let's close out of here. Okay, so that was a quick tour of a pay run that's been posted. Now I'll just show you what happens when you add a pay run. So what I'll do is I'll just show you one way that it, it actually won't work. Um, so you can see here we've got a fortnightly pay run in draft. So if we try to add another one, so we go to the next fortnightly calendar and hit next. You can see here we get this error message saying there can be only one draft pay run per calendar. So we can't have a second fortnightly calendar in draft. We'd ac actually have to delete this or post it first. Now you may have also noticed when we clicked on add pay run, there were some other options as well. So we could post a pay run for that executive calendar um, that we made. That would be for the month of November. We can also do a weekly one and you can do an unscheduled one as well. So the unscheduled ones are pretty handy because um, you can post them anytime and you can uh, do things like make corrections um, to previous pay runs um, if you need to. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click on weekly and next. Okay, so we've just created a weekly pay run. I'll just go back to pay runs for a sec. Okay, I just wanted to show you that in draft now we have one fortnightly one and one weekly one, so you can have them both there together. Okay, so I'll just click back into it. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside of a pay run um, screen before it gets posted. We've just got this little um, error message at the top there because we didn't actually finish John Smith's um, tax declaration when we put him in there, so that's fine. It's just saying that it, he'll be taxed at the highest marginal tax rate because we didn't put a um, tax file number in for him. So we can still go ahead and use this pay run. And what you've got here now is uh, three employees, including John Smith that we created. And then over here, you can actually choose whether to include them or not. So if I click on this um, green uh, tick here, that actually takes Odette out of the pay run. So I can click back on it and I can put it back in there just like that. So down the bottom here, you have um, the ability to add a payslip message. If you click on that and add a message, it will show up on everybody's payslips for this pay run. 
You can also delete the pay run. Um, you can reset the pay run. And again, you've got some reports that you can look at over here. And of course, when you're done, you can post the pay run. So I'll just show you the reset function. So let's just go into John. Okay, so we've got his ordinary hours here. Um, and we've also got that annual leave. You might remember we actually put um, an annual leave request in there. So let's see what happens if we go and add something else. So I'll just add an earnings line. And uh, we don't have any bonuses or anything in there. So I'll just put overtime times two. Okay, that's come up to here. And I'll just put in say 20 hours. Okay. All right, so that's now changed. You can see his net pay went up quite a bit. Um, and so has his um, tax and his superannuation. So I just wanted to make a big change there so we can see there's a couple of things we can do. The first one is when we come down the bottom, we can actually just reset this one pay slip. So if you've gone and made changes in it um, here and you want to undo it, you can just click on reset. Okay, and you can see now that that overtime is gone. So I'm just gonna add it back in. Okay, so there's the 20 hours in there and his pay has gone back up. This time I'll save it. And we'll just go back to the pay run screen. All right, so now he's got a lot more money coming in and you can see it says last edited 21st of November. I'll also edit Tracy's and she's actually got nothing coming through on her pay. So if we put 20 hours in for her, at least we've got something showing up there now and we'll just click on save. I'll go back to the pay run. Okay. And now you can see two of them have been edited. So now if we click on reset pay run, they should go back to the way they were. Okay, so you can see now John's earnings have gone back to normal and Tracy has no earnings at all. Okay, so that's how you can reset it. Um, you can also delete it, which I'll do in a sec, but I just wanted to show you at the top here. You do get a summary up here of the main numbers. So that's the total earnings, the total taxes for the pay run, the total super, and then the net pay, um, which is the earnings minus the tax. And you can see the status there as draft and the actual payment date for this is the 22nd of November. So as you make changes in there, these numbers at the top will change too. All right, so let's go and delete the pay run. Okay, and now you can see that we don't have uh, that draft pay run there anymore. Okay, so now we know a bit about pay runs and how they work and also how the pay templates uh, work as well. Let's go ahead and actually post a pay run. So I'm going to add back that pay run that we were using because it's actually got our new employee in it that we set up before. So we'll just put that one back in. So let's just assume um, that we're happy with everything inside of uh, everybody's uh, pay templates there. So before you go ahead and post your pay run, what you'll want to do is check a few reports. So you can come down to view reports and you can open up these reports and you can check whatever you like. So let's just start with the pay slips. Okay. And on this report, this is the pay slips um, that your employees will be sent when you email it to them. And you can just go through and you can check all of the details um, on these pay slips to make sure they're okay. So then you've also got your pay, payroll employee summary. And as you can see, it's a very summarized version of their earnings, deductions, tax, super, net pay, and there's some reimbursements there as well. So just the two, two employees featuring on this one because the third one is not being paid. And there's the totals down the bottom there. And they match to the totals up the top here. So you can just double check everything there. Then you've got your payroll activity details. And this is a little bit similar to the pay slips um, in that you can go through and you can check all the different pay lines um, and just make sure everybody's um, getting the right things in the right place. Okay, then you've got your pay run journal. 
So this is the journal that Xero will post in the background when you post your pay run. So you might remember these general ledger codes um, that we set up um, when we were doing our um, payroll settings at the beginning of this section of the course. So obviously if you've chosen different um, general ledger codes for your business, they will show up here and the amounts will be posted over here, the debits and credits. So you can just have a look and check your payroll um, journal before you actually post it if you like. And then finally you've got bank payments. Okay, and this is a good one to check, particularly if you've got an employee where you're paying them into two different accounts. So you remember we set up John Smith, so he's got his first $50 going into that joint account, and then you've got the rest of it going into his own personal account. So that's a good one to check um, for that purpose. All right, so once you're happy with everything, you can just click on post pay run. Okay, and that's been posted. So after you've posted the pay run, there's a few things that you can do. Down in the pay run options here, you can download an ABA file. And if I open that up, this is the file you can upload into your internet banking to automatically pay everybody. So you'll pay them uh, these net pay amounts over here um, from your ABA file. So it's not much to look at, but when you upload it into your internet banking, um, it will all make sense and you can go ahead and check everything against what you've got here. You can also email pay slips to your employees. Okay, so they've all got email addresses here in Xero. If they don't have an email address in there, you won't be able to email them their pay slips. So just remember, um, like we said earlier in the course, just make sure you set up um, an email address for them. And when you click on email pay slips, they will get an email and it will have the PDF version of their payslip um, attached. Okay, and then finally you've got revert to draft. So you can do that um, if you've made a mistake and you want to undo um, your posted pay run, you can do that. You can't do it after you've actually reconciled um, the pay run in the uh, bank account. So if you've already reconciled it, you won't be able to re um, revert unless of course you unreconcile it in your bank account. So just be aware of that. And then finally, you've got your button to do your STP filing to the ATO. So if you click on that, um, it will ask you just to confirm that everything's correct and then it will send um, the uh, data to the ATO. And then if I just click on close, so that will go from being not filed to pending. So it'll be, uh, pretty much the same color as that. I think it's a yellow color, and, but it will say pending, which means you know that you've actually at least filed it. And then um, a short time later, it should come up green and it should say that it's actually filed. Okay, so that's how you post a pay run um, in Xero. So we ran through a fair bit of information there, a little bit of a tour and housekeeping first, and a few different things that you can do um, to amend people's pay along the way. And then when you're happy with everything, check your reports, um, post your pay run, um, download your ABA file and upload it into your online banking, and then do your STP filing in the end. So that's the end of our lesson on how to post pay runs in Xero. Okay, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more free videos, and also check out the links in the description below for our Xero courses. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.